The very first playable version of StarCraft 2, the Wings of Liberty beta, came out well over 12 years ago at this point. And there's no denying that StarCraft 2 in 2022 is a vastly different game. Not only did we have Heart of the Swarm as well as Legacy of the Void, those expansion packs, they added new units to the game, which is all fine and dandy, but practically every aspect of the multiplayer version of StarCraft has had some sort of adjustment. Be it like the starting worker count, right? So as you may have already noticed, these guys are starting off with six workers each, which is... We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. Uh, but also every unit, it in many cases, many of the units have had like a dozen different adjustments over the last decade or so. So today, it's time to go and take a trip down memory lane. Today we're gonna have a look at games played in 2022, but on a Wings of Liberty map with the Wings of Liberty mod. Meaning that all of these games, they are gonna be exactly like the game was when it first came out. Alrighty, so game number one. It's on Daybreak. In the top right hand corner, right from the get-go by the way, Daybreak. That gets me a little bit nostalgic already, just because of the fact that I've played Probably hundreds of games on this map, but probably if you if you add in the games I've seen on the map as well, it's probably thousands. I wouldn't be surprised. Anyways, with the, the blue Zerg drones from South Korea, we have none other than Su and his opponent playing here with the Red Terran SCVs. We are looking at Bunny's main command center. Alrighty, so right from the get-go, right? <laughs> Two minutes into it, the very first structures are coming up. Yay! Hatchery gets planted down on the low ground. It looks like Bunny is actually playing a pretty greedy game over here. As he wants to go for a command center first. Okay. Yeah, we're not gonna have a whole lot of action here for the foreseeable future. So, uh, in this video, I'm casting a Terran versus Zerg. Then I also want to cast a Protoss versus Terran, as well as a Zerg versus Protoss. So have a look at the timestamps uh, in this video timeline if you want to see the other matchups too. But of course, you guys are gonna watch the entire video, right? You're not gonna, gonna nah, you're not gonna skip ahead, right? You're gonna sit here and watch the game together with me. So here's the thing. Um, as a solo commentator, as someone who casts a lot of StarCraft, one of the most impactful changes that Blizzard has ever made is increasing the work account from 6 to 12. Because it turns out in the first few minutes of a game of StarCraft, um, players were basically spending all of their time going up to 12 workers in the first place anyways. I guess back when Wings of Liberty first came out, it was already uh, an increase compared to where we were at in StarCraft Brood War, so maybe 6 already seemed like a lot, but I'm actually very, very glad. Not just as a player, but also as a commentator, because I would have so much time to fill. Um, but yeah, especially as a player too, that the games are a little bit shorter and we get to the action a little bit quicker. Even in 2022, there's still players that say, no, we should go back to the six worker start. None of the good players really think that though. So, I, you know, <laughs> I think we're good. Anyways, um, I'm sure Sue and Bunny remember what Wings of Liberty was like, but there's no denying that the game was very different. So let me just name, for example, I'm not gonna be able to go and remember all of the changes that we've had in patch notes, right? Because there's so many, like literally thousands of changes, I would imagine, right? If we add them all up together, like the bunker build time got changed like a dozen times. Um, if we just talk about new units that got introduced, and this already, Makes it... Ooh, it's actually a very quick Roach Warren right here from Sue. Very quick, meaning close to the five-minute mark. So I do think he wants to actually go for some cheeky aggression. I guess it, right from the get-go, becomes relevant too. So for Zerk, for example, in Heart of the Swarm, Zerk got access to the Swarm Host and the Viper. Now, we don't see the Swarm Host very often in 2022, but the Viper is a very common unit. And then what kind of surprised me, because I almost forgot about this, in Legacy of the Void, Zerk got access to the Ravager and the Lurker. Very hard to imagine a game without those units. I don't know if Sue remembers. Because I feel like if he does remember, he'd start up Zerkling Speed. <laughs> so, yeah, he has gas right now to go for Zerkling Speed. He's gonna try and morph into Ravager. If he, if he tries, that'd be kind of funny. Anyhow, for Terran. A couple of changes have, of course, been uh, made to them as well. As far as the units go, though. Um, in Heart of the Swarm, Terran got access to the Hellbet as well as the Widow Mine. Those units are commonly used all of the time, especially the Widow Mine. We see that practically every Terran game. Um, and then in Legacy of the Void, we had the Cyclone and the Liberator added into the mix as well. So I think, broadly speaking, this matchup is probably not that much different, because you can still play Marine, Medi uh, Marine Medivac tank, right? Going up against, like, Mutaling Bane or something. Dude, if... Okay, he starts up Link Speed. No, he cancels it again. I think he's gonna try and morph in Ravagers. Oh, that's an awkward moment here, Sue. 
Uh, yeah, he's got the roaches selected. Now he starts up link speed again. He also hit a supply block though, so... Anyways, yeah, if you click right here on one of the roaches, it lacks the morph into the Ravager button right over here in the... the bottom right in corner. Alright, so here we go the roaches. How much damage can he actually do? I mean, honestly, it doesn't look like the Terran here is prepared for this whatsoever. He's trying to get himself the concussive shells research out for the Marauders. Which I guess will holding this, uh, yeah, will make it a little bit easier once it's done. There's a lot of values that have been changed too, though, so I don't think it really, like, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to... ...remember exactly what they have changed to the game. As far as, like, roaches and whatnot go, I mean, the very first version of the roach was ridiculously overpowered. I don't really remember exactly what version of StarCraft we're playing over here, but... When StarCraft 2 first went into beta, so in the very first iteration of the game... The Roach had plus two more base armor, and it was one supply each. <laughs> now, that was only in the game for a couple of weeks, because it was very obvious that that was way too much. Basically, what Zerk would do is just make Roaches every game. I mean, we still see a lot of Zerk players literally just making Roaches, but now I imagine they are half the supply they cost, and they also, you know, start with plus two armor. And obviously, you could go all the way up to, like, plus, you know, three of researches that in the... Evo Chambers too, it was a bit of a meme. Doesn't look like those roaches are that strong, so it kind of depends on what version of wings we're playing as well. Alright, a little bit of counter-attack damage over here. 14 SCVs, by the way, were killed by Sue. My god, we're already 9 minutes into the game. Oh, no, those are Blizzard minutes. Okay, that's something else that we gotta discuss. You notice how the clock is moving faster than real-life time? This is another change that they made to the game um, a very long time ago. When StarCraft II first came out, I think they probably designed the game in the normal game speed. So if you play StarCraft II's campaign, for example, on like normal difficulty, it'll play on the normal game speed, right? However, multiplayer and tournaments were always played in the faster game speed. The clock, however... <laughs> the clock, it keeps in mind normal game seconds. And therefore, it's a little bit differently. Like, I think uh, a second is like 60% faster or something. I don't really know exactly what the what the exact numbers are. But basically, they adjusted the clock at some point. Which is also the reason, by the way, why at the 43 minute mark in a regular game of StarCraft 2 right now, it clicks over to showing a zero at the beginning because it expects an hour to already be there. Just as a little bit of side trivia. But yeah, it's, it's a very different game. Oh my god, Bunny. Buddy, he needs to research siege mode! Oh my god, he doesn't have siege mode. I forgot about that too. Okay, so this is an early version of StarCraft. There it is. He's researching siege mode for the siege tank. This was Bunny trying to siege up the tank over here in the corner of the of the base, but then realizing he couldn't. Anyways, looks like the Benchy is gonna be A-OK. -okay. Benchy is not gonna make things that much different. My god, yeah, so this is another remnant from StarCraft II's Wings of Liberty. Um, and I guess from, from, you know, even earlier than that, right? Like, uh, from, from StarCraft I, uh, where researching... Well, it's still the thing right now in, in Brood War, right? Like, uh, researching Siege Tech is very important. Alright, now, as far as OP things go, right? Overpoweredness in 2010. What exactly was overpowered? Honestly, Zerk. <laughs> Zerks, when they managed to get to the Brute Lord Infestor army, it was like the Skytos of 2010, but then like 12 times worse, okay? Because if Zerks at the pro level managed to get to Brute Lord Infestor, they couldn't really lose the game very well. So the dynamic of all the matchups was completely different, where like the opponents were desperately trying to win the game before that point, and Zerks could just kind of sit back. Uh, okay. Honestly, Bunny's doing a great job harassing here. I thought for a second Sue was going to be able to just win the game off of his Roach pressure alone, but... That little aggression from him, that second move out, may have not been ideal, despite the fact that the Siege tank couldn't Siege. You can do it now, buddy! You can do it! The button is available! So funny. <laughs> Alright, couple of mutas are coming up. Man, the, the game's pacing feels so off, right? Like, I know a lot of people tell me that when they are first new to watching StarCraft, they're like, Oh my god, this game is way too quick. I don't know what to look and what to pay attention to. 
Uh, I think it's the job of a commentator to try and make, you know, watching the game a little bit easier, especially if you're first new, but it feels like we're like crawling through the mud in this game right now. It's just all so slow and sluggish. Anyways, Bunny, ready to go in for a push. His start command center is flying on over towards that location over there. Sue's creep spread is looking pretty good. He's gonna try and do, I guess, a Mutalisk uh, flyby. Okay, missile turret does start up in the main base. And he wants to try and see if he can potentially kill those siege tanks though, before they can actually create a chokehold on that third hatch. Okay, picking up some of the reinforcements. Alright, there's a good spot. Bailing Nest isn't even done yet. Honestly, this is the way that Sue plays in most of his games as well right now in 2022, right? Like, not, none of the changes have really been made. There we go. Okay, you absolutely crushed that. Yeah, the siege tanks were in a good spot, but there wasn't much of an army to really support it. Only a single medevac too. Ugh. I'm liking this position here for our Zerg player quite a bit better. Then again, he's only at 59 drones or 60 drones right now. By the way, the map layout, also not to be underestimated, right? We have that central hatch. Yeah, that normally would be the fourth or the one over here in the bottom right. But other than that, there's not really a whole lot of bases you can take. So a lot of these maps, they were designed with players taking a, a maximum of like four, five, maybe six bases in a crazy game. A lot of that has to do with the starting resources. So the starting resources really is one of the absolute biggest changes that Blizzard has ever made to this game. It forces players to go out into the map and just expand more aggressively and actually take calculated choices. Um, in the earliest versions of StarCraft, just like in Brute War, I suppose, you can sit on two bases for forever. Like, you can literally turtle on two bases for like 20 minutes. Look at this. We're now 16 minutes, 16 Blizzard minutes, that is, into the game. And the main base is still looking quite good. You can literally sit there until the 20-minute mark on two bases and be reasonable. Reasonable. All right. Some aggressive bouncing going on right here. I don't know if these Mutas have their rapid uh, healing out of combat ability here. I'm not sure. I don't really know exactly if the the mod is like completely perfect, but I can't imagine. So far at the very least, it seems very on point. Uh, it seems like everything is quite okay. You can see these guys are definitely struggling though. Supply blocks are hit left, right and center. There's not a drop in the main base. Mutas were all the way down south, so Bunny's actually getting once more a good amount of work done. He's also pushing with an army here. Oh my god, no! Okay. Not ideal. Yeah, the skill level has also gone up so much, though. Uh, yeah, still more than enough Zerk to just clean all of this up. Um... If you really want to get super nostalgic, look up some of the very first GSL Code S games. So those games were played back in 2010. Fruit Dealer, the Grand Finals. Fruit Dealer is the one who won the very first event. I honestly believe that the average like Platinum League player in 2022 can win the very first GSL. <laughs> okay, maybe not quite, but like genuinely epic games in the early days of StarCraft were two guys sitting back for 20 minutes and then clashing once. Like, those were epic games. We've come a very long way. Like, this is not even... I mean, this is, I guess, not too far out there, but you can see that these guys are using a 2022 mentality to try and, uh, yeah, play 2010 StarCraft. So they're very active when, really, they could be sitting back much more passively and would probably be okay. Aggressive rallies right there from Buddy, trying to get a lot of damage in. YOLO dropships into the main base, trying to just snipe as many drones as possible. All right, Sue right now though, with a solid 50 supply lead. He's taking a base in the bottom right hand corner, so he's gonna be able to, uh, yeah, mine quite nicely. Another thing that Zerks didn't do, back when this map was first introduced, or maybe they did, back when the map was first introduced, because this one wasn't around in like 2010. Anyways, Zerk would only ever make a one queen per hatchery. So that was it, like they wouldn't really do any creep spread. Because that would require an extra queen. And they just made, you know, per per base, they made one queen. That was it. There weren't really a lot of... Like, right now, people obviously make, like, a dozen queens. Like, that's not even me exaggerating. It's not uncommon to see a dozen queens in a game of professional StarCraft. Sometimes see up to, like, 20. 
Anyways, queens have quickly become... And the, this is like the old school version of the queen too. They have like two more anti-air range and they can transfuse on creep and... They have instant transfuses too, no healing over time. What else did they change about these? Anyways. I think this is Sue trying to go in for the killer moment. Does he have enough stuff to overwhelm this Terran player? Thor in the front does take a lot of hits. Yeah, those Bane links. Collapsing on top of it. Yeah, you'd love to have some splash damage over here, right? I guess there were some... Oh my god, it's a Thor with, a, with an energy bar. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but the Thor had... They had a skill called 350 millimeter cannons, I think? Horrible skill, never really useful. Anyhow, uh, yeah, it's weird seeing a Thor with an energy bar. It's my favorite Terran spellcaster. <laughs> Anyways, here we go again. This time around, Bunny decides to take the fight on Creep. He has no splash damage, though. So then what are you gonna do? Like, what are you gonna do against the Zork army without splash damage? I honestly don't know if you don't have Widow Mines here or Siege Tanks. I guess you can't have Widow Mines, right? So you have to have Siege Tanks. Anyways, um, not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. All right, he's busy producing one Thor at once, but already a bit too much damage is done. Bunny's bases are starting to run low now that we're 22 minutes into it. And that means that Sue wins the first game of the day. Oh, the mineral line. It looks so empty. Only six workers. Anyhow, our next game. It's on Metropolis. It's spawning right here in the top right-hand corner. We have Trap. And his opponent, the same Terran player from the previous game, we are looking at Bunny's main command center. Huge shout out, by the way, to the Olimo League for organizing these tournaments. I'm a big fan of their invitational format. Basically, they do conventional StarCraft tournaments with a twist. So, rather than just, you know, watching games on the same maps, they, they have done, like, free-for-alls. And I think their previous theme was, like, Tired of Ladder Maps, where they... Oh, okay, I was gonna say, is he gonna go gas first? That makes no sense. Anyways, they've basically been organizing StarCraft tournaments with a twist, and I, I'm a big fan. Check out their Patreon page. I'll go ahead and link it down below in the description of this video. That's the way they support these players and these tournaments, so go check it out. Maybe you're interested. Anyhow, um, I was thinking about other OP strategies, and the one that came to mind right away is the infamous Archon Toilet. I know there's gonna be many, uh, many people watching this right now. They're like, Loco, what in the world are you even saying? Okay, so here's the Archon Toilet. I don't think it's gonna be pulled off in this game because the replay timer isn't quite that long. I think, I think you need a game that's at least like... This is the longest TVP, I think, from the replay pack, but um, you probably need like a, a half hour game minimum. Anyhow, um, Archon Toilet. This is how it works, okay? The Mothership. Was that actually Heart of the Swarm? Was it when you made the Mothership core into the Mama Ship? I'm not even entirely sure. No, I think you could do it in Wings of Liberty. Anyhow, um, this was one of the very strongest strategies, regardless of whether or not it was available in Wings of Liberty. I think it was. Anyhow, um, the mothership had an ability called a Vortex, which was basically like a black hole. So basically what you would do is you would cast, it would have like an area about that big, right? Around that circle right over there. And then it would pull units towards the center of, I guess, this one right over there, right? And units would get in. Uh, all the way to the center. Now, while the units are in there and they're like stretched as small as possible, or I guess squeezed as small as possible, um, they would stack, but they would also be invulnerable, right? However, as soon as the vortex ended, the units for about five seconds would still be stacked together, and then it would slowly fan out, right? And that would be the moment at which they would once again become vulnerable. So. It was a, a nice ability to get units out of the equation. You could also dump your own stuff in there too if you weren't microing correctly. So you could run into some issues here and there, but it was a uh, it was a cool ability, right? It was fun. Then people found out, didn't take that long, that if you added a bunch of your own Archons in there, so Archons inside of your own Mothership Vortex would basically, it would look like they get flushed down, thus it was called, you know, the Archon Toilet. They would start dealing splash damage to those clumped up units before they would be able to fan all the way out. And people did the math. I, I think it came down to the fact that basically you wanted to just throw as many Archons as you had into that Vortex. But it was down to like eight or so Archons to kill literally anything. So if you manage to catch like, I don't know, 20 battle cruisers of your opponent in one Vortex. And then you would add in like eight of your own Archons. They would not be able to escape. There was no counterplay, right? And that's I guess a big theme that we had 
since that moment, since like the Wings of Liberty, um, uh, Blizzard really thought about counterplay and how you could actually work against things. So one example, and by the way, there's a, a proxy factory. Oh my god, we're five minutes into the game. Could have sworn it was going to be a proxy starport, but no, it's just a factory. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like for example, force fields and ravager biles, right? And and, and there's just a lot of like counterplay that they've been implementing into the game that makes it so much better. Like basically every everything in the game has some sort of counter, right? And and you know there's some sort of thing you can do to try and counter what your opponent is going for. Whereas abilities like the Vortex really didn't have that option. Anyhow, so Terran, they had access to, with Heart, uh, with Heart of the Swarm and then Legacy of the Void, they got access to the Hellbat, the Widowmine, and then the Cyclone and the Liberator. For Protoss, the units that got added for them, first off, in Heart of the Swarm, we had the Mothership Core. Absolutely atrocious unit. Didn't like it one bit. Uh, it had the Oracle added, and then also the Tempest. Obviously, Oracles and Tempest, we see those all of the time. Very, very strong. Oh my god. <laughs> the Sentry doesn't have Hallucination. Hallucination, I think you could research it in the Cybernetics Core, if I recall... Mm. Anyhow. Um, so, they got in Heart of the Swarm, Mothership Core, Oracle, and Tempest. And then in Legacy of the Void, they got access to the Adept as well as the Disruptor. It's very hard to imagine a game without all of those things, man. So different. Did we just hit another supply block? Did we really just hit another supply block? Alright. Supply Depot did finish up here eventually, so Bunny is going to be able to continue macroing. Anyhow. Yeah, the game is very different. Uh, Immortal Sentry? Are these Immortals with Hardened Shields? <laughs> immortals with Hardened Shields never died. I guess those are Hardened Shields. I don't think that's Barrier. They replaced the Immortals defensive capabilities at some point. Yeah, yeah, it's not hard. It's, it, yeah, okay. So this is just gonna be all out aggression right here. Immortals can live for a very long time. At the same time, couple of Hellions though. All right, Bunny finding a lot of success apparently with those Hellions. Dealing some damage. Eventually though, those Protoss units did march to watch the other side of the map. My god. 21 probes. All right, here's the Immortal. Can it deal enough damage? I mean, it seems to me that Bunny has made a little bit do you have to activate it manually? Oh, I think you gotta activate it manually, Trap. Uh, do you have to act- Did you have to activate that manually? I thought it was automatic. He's got the ability, he just didn't use it. So that Immortal just took a lot of damage. Oh, also, obviously, Protosis could then warp in with just a single pylon. Factory, by the way, in the main base. He's trying to make a Hellion over here. Might be a little bit overly ambitious. Um, these days, there's two different kinds of warping in StarCraft 2. So, either you use the slow warp in, right, where you just have a pylon, or you use the warp in from a, a prism or a pylon that's powered by a nexus or a gateway, right? Um, that wasn't the case back in Wings. You could just warp in at the same speed all of the time. Robo Bay coming up. Uh, I guess it only gives you access to the Colossus. Was there another reason to go for the Robo Bay? Was this just a Colossus machine? God, I, I don't like that. I think so. Um, I mean, obviously you have the Warp Prism speed and the... Uh, Observer speed, right? Like, those things are... The Warp Prism also hadn't... I don't think it had any of that pickup range that it has these days. So I'm pretty sure it was, like, not a very useful unit. Plus it had, like, two less armor than it's currently got, so it would just sort of die. Yeah, I think you basically only go Robo Bay if you want to go Colossus. That's really the only reason. Anyways, Bunny. <laughs> Apparently content with the amount of damage he's done. Oh, dude! This is the version of the map where they have the island bases. Oh, those island bases sucked. I say this as someone who mostly played Zerk. Uh, basically, everyone hated island bases other than Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, for Zerg, you would have to, like, I guess, use a Dropper Lord or 
you know, like a Nidus network to go to the island. And as Protoss, you could, like, send a prism there, I guess. But as Terran, you could just make a command center over here and then fly it on over there. So the original solution to that is the fact that, you know, rocks were added. So Terrans couldn't just go for, like, you know, ball off over here, command center in the corner of the main, and then think this is their very first expo? How in the world would you break that, right? At that stage in the game. It's not gonna happen. My god, we've come a long way. This is fun to watch, but I'm glad that StarCraft is the way that it is, okay? We've come a long way. I remember thinking as well back back then, right? Because I was kind of new to esports too. I hadn't really seen a lot of esports. I thought StarCraft 2 Wings of Liberty when it first came out was the most epic game ever made. And I remember a lot of like forum elitists at that point that were like, oh my god, you think this is good? You've never even watched any Brood War or Warcraft 3, have you? And I was like, there's no way that Warcraft 3 and Brood War are better than this. I think I probably should have watched some more of that back then, because I probably would have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I still watch it obviously from time to time right now too. But yeah, there's no denying it. The StarCraft 2, when StarCraft 2 first came out, um, the games necessarily were, or you know, they weren't necessarily as exciting as they are right now. Also, I remember like whenever like Mutas would fly in, Terrans would stim literally everything, including Marauders. So like five Mutas fly over here. Terran army from the low ground comes standing up to- Oh my god. It was bad. It was really bad. There's the hallucination research! Yeah, there was more of a reason to have a cyber core back then than just having air weapon and air armor upgrades and then the warp gates research. Yeah, you could go for the hallucination research. I think that's another remnant of Brute War. Anyhow, Bunny trying to create a bit of a trap right here for trap. The trap obviously picked the nickname trap, not just for, you know, no apparent reason. He's prepared for it. We have random observers in very random locations. I don't know what they're... I guess they're scouting drops or something, but... Anyhow. Okay, huge stim. My god. There's an immortal going down. I think you have to activate hardened shield. Oh, also, Colossi, um, this is like, I guess, a relatively more recent change. Colossi used to be good against everything, and then Blizzard changed it for them to be specifically good against light units. So they suck against Marauders right now, but they're really good against Marines. But in this version of StockCraft, they were good against everything. Yeah, they're just burning everything. <laughs> That's why you really needed to have Vikings out in order to deal with them. There's no counter for force fields either, obviously. Okay, eventually the Colossi do all get picked off. Immortals, okay. Getting some work in, but I think that might just be a little bit too much Terran here. Bunny dealing so much damage with that first Hellion harass. It takes him an additional 10 minutes, but eventually he arrives on the other side of the map with an army that seems unstoppable. And there he goes. He wins the next game. I don't know why this cracks me up, but seeing the game start with only six drones is kind of funny. It looks wrong. It just, it doesn't look right. Anyhow, next up, we are on... Is this Whirlwind? Taldorim Altar? It's one of the two. I probably should have checked. Anyways, bottle right in corner with the Blue Zerg drones. We have Sue and his opponent. He goes by the name of Trap, and Trap is in the top right. Yeah, it's Taldorim Altar. Oh, these maps, these maps, these maps, they were... Oh! There's a version of this map as well that has rocks at the third base. This is not that one. Um, does that make it a, an earlier version or a later version? I think they removed the rocks in a later version rather than add them. I'm not 100% sure. Anyhow. Protoss, in general, is very build order dependent. Right, so this goes for StarCraft 2 right now, too. Um, Protoss, in general, extremely build order dependent and not really... Not really a lot of wiggle room. Like, Zerg can kind of just go, you know, hatch gas pool or pool hatch gas and get a bunch of drones. Like, Zerg is a lot more based of around drone timings and making sure you get enough stuff. Terran, obviously, also a little bit more rigid, but Protoss in particular, extremely rigid when it comes to their strategies. If you make a little mistake, Zerkens get into your base, or you just don't have defenses against, like, Mutas, or, you know, it's hard to scout with Protoss, and 
Especially if you have to research hallucination. I don't even know how you scout. How do you scout if you have to research hallucination? Anyways, I'm trying to think what build order did Protoss play back then? Well, it's definitely not Nexus first. I can tell you that much. Nexus first was certainly not a thing. Uh, I think if you do this, you kind of have to go for a forge, maybe? Like a gateway, like a forge fast expand was a popular build back then. Forge fast, fast expand would be horrible in 2022. Anyhow. Sue is gonna go hatch into a spawning pool. I actually quite like what he did against Bunny where he, like, I think he went double gas at the same time. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a forge. Makes the most sense. And now a gateway. Um, I guess a forge is gonna keep him safe. And I guess if you go for late gases here, and like, this is scattered right now by Trap. Trap also should know that it's not gonna be that much aggression. Maybe a couple of Zerkalings, but... Other than that, not really too much. Nah. That alone makes me nostalgic, even though that's not StarCraft 2, but... <laughs> yeah, it's funny how StarCraft Wings of Liberty has a lot more aspects of StarCraft Brood War. Like, a lot more. Funny how that works out. Uh, there's only one third base location, by the way, here for Sue. So maybe Trap could have tried to block it. Uh, yeah, that base. I don't know. Whose base is that? I guess this is his most likely next candidate for a fourth? I don't know. Anyhow, Zerklings will arrive on the other side of the map. Photon Cannon is finishing up at the correct time. Nicely done right here by Trap. Clean execution. Yeah, since this is a four-player map, Sue has to send his overlords all the way around right now. I mean, since he sent the first one, I think it was the first one, towards the bottom left. Yeah, he had to scout for the expo over there, but it didn't happen. It didn't exist. A lot of perfect pillars, by the way, for overlords. Right over there, right over there, right over there. Those trees don't count, I don't think, but a lot of locations. This area, obviously, too. You have so many locations to put overlords on. Watchtower over here also taking part of, yeah, the map. Like, this this watchtower is actually so critical. We barely see watchtowers in 2022. Like, there's still, they're still obviously a map feature that we have, but Stargate, by the way, here from Trap. Um, we do still see the watchtowers, but usually not in critical areas anymore. Like, usually watchtowers, map makers nowadays put them in, you know, for example, corners or just to, like, check for, like, I don't know, medevac drops or prisms or overlords or something like that. But not really in super critical areas anymore. The main reason for that is that Zerg should theoretically always have access to all of the watchtowers, right? Because Zerglings are cheap, they're fast, you can micro them against Marines, but also against Zealots. It's a small commitment, so Zerg should always have access to them. So, in a way, getting rid of the Zelnaga Watchtowers on the map, it's a small little nerf towards the Swarm, which is more than reasonable. Oh, it's so slow, man. It's so slow. <gasps> uh, all right. Seven and a half minutes. We may finally have some action. <laughs> Uh oh, oh, oh. All right, Phoenix opener here from Trap. I feel like the players are also playing twice as slow. Am I crazy? Like that queen response? What was that, man? <laughs> Sue had full vision of them. He knew that there's Phoenixes out, and he's like, mm, "Now I all tech you." First drone already died. Anyhow. I think it's probably just because of uh, the maps too, right? And these guys are trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. It's, um... Yeah, a lot of the reason why these guys are capable of playing at like 600 actions per minute, right? In many of his, uh, many of these games. Or maybe not these games, but many of the pro games in 2022 is because they have grinded it out, right? They know what they're supposed to be doing. They've grinded it out and they know uh, where they should be looking at what time just because they've done it a gajillion times before. When you have to start playing more flexibly, not as good. 
All right, bunch of random zealots subtly showing up. Doing surprisingly well, though. Queens over here are getting picked up by Trap. Supply count heavily in favor of the Zerk still, but I'm liking this position here for the Protoss quite a bit. Sue decided to be quite aggressive with the amount of drones he made. And it may very well bite him in the butt. Yeah, losing those Queens really makes this tricky. More random slow lots showing up here. They do have plus one, actually. Oh my god, okay. So Trap managed to get... I didn't realize that, but he... He got obviously that Forts is one of his very first structures to try and go for a defensive Photon Cannon. But plus one actually makes them so much better, especially against Zerglings. Or I guess back then we called them Zergalings. That was like an extra syllable. <laughs> yeah, so Roaches... Roaches are gonna be pretty good against Zealots. Or Zealots? No, I don't think anyone ever called them that. Anyways, um... Against Zergalings, though. Zealots now only take two hits to kill them. Rather than three. So it's actually quite an improvement. All right. Looks like eventually he's going to be able to stabilize. But Protoss is about halfway done with their own third Nexus at this point. There's the Colossus once again coming up. Normally, uh, normally a horrible choice against... The warping animation is different too. Anyhow, normally a horrible choice against Roach-based armies. Oh my god, there it is. Yeah. Did they change this symbol? Or am I completely hallucinating right now? What does Grooved Spines look like in 2022? Grooved Spines. Am I crazy? Does it still look exactly like that? I think it does, doesn't it? No, it doesn't! Oh, okay, they did change that icon. This is the new one. I hope I don't forget to edit that in. But that's the new one! Unless I forgot to edit it in. <laughs> <laughs> they did change that upgrade. Uh, that is the Grooved Spines research, which is the ranged upgrade for the... I forgot that they changed that that thing. Did they change that in, in Legacy of the Void? Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't see how this is Spines anyway, how that was relevant to anything. Here comes the Protoss army, though. Very strange combination of units. There's an Observer, but no Prism or anything along those lines. My god, that Colossus is bringing the pain train. Nice little set of lift-ups over here as well from Trap. Don't forget to edit that in, Loco. Don't forget to edit it in. I'm a one-man production team, okay? No, I'm gonna remember. I'm gonna remember. Maybe. Dude, these Colossi, <laughs> Colossi deal so much damage. <laughs> yeah, they just murder everything. So you can see that Sue's instinct over here as well is to go into Roaches, but Roaches into, like, I, I don't know what you should do otherwise. I guess Corruptors, right? Yeah, that's what we would do. We would go Spire into Corruptors. You would try it, just like Terra needs to make, like, 10 Vikings against the uh, Colossus base army. Zerk would also go, like, 10 Corruptors. Corruptors had an ability back then called Corruption. I know. No Caustic Spray. I think it made units take additional damage or something. It was like a damage modifier. Alright, he does actually hold. Oh, it's a warping pylon in the back of the main. He decides to go into a hive. Uh, I'd like to see a spire added on. So you could go Corruptor and then into Brutelords. That would be amazing. Like Brutelord into Brutelord Infestor is the way to go. Oh, Colossus. Okay, it does go down. A little bit of sloppiness right there from Trap. Look at me, I'm the trap now. Says Sue. Try to create a trap for his opponent as he pounces on top of that army. Alright, Blink is not done yet. God, all the timings feel ugly to me, man. The timing here of Blink, nearly 15 minutes into the game. <laughs> Alright, Phoenix is still roaming the map in the bottom left. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, I remember I remember pre-ordering StarCraft II Wings of Liberty to get access to the Wings of Liberty beta because I was interested in the game. Right? Like, I bought that, and, uh, like, in an alternate universe, Loco in the past didn't do that. Right? And there's a very good chance I would have just, I don't know, gotten distracted and played something else, and I would have never actually... My life would be very different, is what I'm trying to say, if I didn't make that decision, which is kind of funny, because at the time it was very trivial. 
I was like, ah, I want to play a cool game. I heard this game might be good. I guess I'll get it, because I like strategy games, like Warcraft, and like, for example, like Command and Conquer. <laughs> it's kind of wild. Uh oh, oh. That makes me more nostalgic than anything else. What was he saying? Hmm. <laughs> no! Oh, snap! Sue decided to go up towards the hive to try and get vipers? Yeah, they weren't a thing, dude! So he decides to go Ultra Cavern and Spire now instead. That is so awkward. Oh god, that may actually just be, be game ending. I mean, I don't think vipers would have changed this. No, I think he would still be super dead. Yeah, I think he's still super dead. GG! Trap wins. Our final game of the day.